Today in this video we'll be discussing the timeline of events prior to and during the Chilean coup of 1973. So our story actually starts September 4th, 1970, where President Allende was democratically elected as the first socialist president of Chile. He took office in November 2nd, 1970. He promised lots of different things to the Chilean people, like the nationalization of their resources, which had been prior to that sold out to other countries at expropriated rates. On July 11th of 1971, the Congress of Chile unanimously approves uh, the proposal for the nationalization of the country's copper mines. And copper was a huge resource for the Chilean people. Already, there was a lot of uproar between uh, the left and the right factions of the political sphere of Chile, and as a result, from all the squabbles, uh, the economy began to tank. So on May 1972, uh, the generals of the government uh, warned Allende that inflation and production declines were jeopardizing national safety. There were many attempted coups before the successful one of 1973 um, to overthrow Allende due to lots of infighting in the government. On September 2nd of 1972, Allende announced a foiled coup. And during that year, uh, in October and November of 1972, Allende was sick for 10 days and it was announced that he had had a heart attack. On August 22nd of 1973, the defense minister, minister resigned and Augusto Pinochet took over as head of the armed forces. Pinochet gave the troops the option to either be purged or to follow him in his plans for a coup. Out in the streets throughout this whole time from 1970 to 1973, uh, lots of youth had been fighting on either side. There had been lots of fights in the streets, uh, revolts, strikes on both sides. The Navy seized Valparaiso and Concepcion by 9 a.m. They marched on to Santiago, the capital, where La Moneda, or their equivalent of the White House, was, and that's where Allende was at the time as well. The Air Force requested for Allende to resign. He did not, but he also didn't call his followers to revolt, because he was trying to avoid mass bloodbaths and slaughter. The military junta led by Pinochet then proceeded to bomb La Moneda and Allende killed himself rather than being taken by Pinochet's troops. After this, the original military junta that originally had three people was narrowed down just to Pinochet and he became the commander-in-chief or, as we know now today, dictator of Chile. He enacted an aggressive policy where he persecuted any of his political enemies which were mainly those on the left and Catholic side, though many of his victims have never been found.